Here we go. Formalizing lasts a little bit. We're going to talk about normal approximations in binomial distributions. That's the official title of what we're doing. So forget about, no, don't forget about the skills. They're way too good. 10% condition. Well, again, remember what that says is that when you're taking a random sample and you're not replacing the items that you're taking out, and that's of size n, the big population is of size capital N, you can use a binomial distribution so long as n is no more than 10% of the population. So in math, that would be n is less than or equal to 10% of capital N. Okay? It's extremely helpful, and that's how we get through basically all of the rest of the stats. Okay? Large count rules says you can use a normal distribution to model a binomial distribution if n times p is bigger than 10, so that's the expected number of successes, and then the number of failures, which is n times 1 minus p, is also bigger than 10. Okay, so those are our two big ideas, and truly, this is the type of stuff, I mean, star it, flag it, whatever you need to do. We're going to keep on coming back to these for a very long time. There's a lot of what we're going to be doing is dealing with stuff like this. Okay. So coming down here, again, you can pause now, pause in a second. Six, let's say 65% of high school students are thought to be eating breakfast before going to school. Okay. We pick a random sample of 500 high school students that were surveyed. Um, X is going to be the number of high school students in the random sample of size 500 who eat breakfast before going to school. Okay, answer the questions, come on back and check your work. We'll see you in a minute. Hey, glad you kept going. So explain why X can be modeled by a binomial distribution even though the sample was selected without replacement. Now, you still have to satisfy the B, the N, and the S. Okay, so just because you don't have independence, you still have to satisfy all of the rest for B binomials. So we still have a success was eating breakfast, failure is no breakfast, so it fits the binary group. Independence, while it's not independent because there's no replacement, it does fit the 10% condition because 500 is less than 10% of all high school students in the nation. At least I hope there's more than 5,000 of you. Um, and then from here, do, 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 do. Number of trials fixed, N is 500, and then obviously the probability is 65%. So, bing, we can treat it. So, again, you still need to hit everything, and if it's not independent, you can, however, use the 10% condition to. Follow, follow it. For number two, use the binomial distribution to estimate the probability that 300 or fewer high school students are going. Since it's fewer, we can use the actual binomial uh, cumulative fun distribution function. Plug in your parts, you get an answer of 0 0.0113. Justify why we can use the normal distribution on this if we would like to. Well, we do it because if n and p, n is 565%, we get 325 successes, which would then actually leave us to 175 failures. Sometimes students ask me, well, can't I just subtract this from 500 to get this number? Well, you need to show this. As far as I, just, just, it's one of those, just do it. It's just easier. You're not going to, it'll throw the greater less if nothing else, okay? So it meets our large count conditions, so therefore it is normal. So. can use normal distribution. There, now it seems very, very formal. So use a normal distribution to estimate the probability that 300 or fewer high school students need to eat, a, eat breakfast before your school. So now, I mean, I know we did it up here as binomial. We're going to assume, hey, if we did no, the normal instead, what would it look like? So mean is uh, 325. Standard deviation by using the formula n times p times 1 minus p. And taking the square root of that is 10.665, which then, going through the z-score, of a negative 2.34. And if you use table A, and of course, I do have my drawing. Don't worry. I do have it labeled. Don't worry. We end up getting 0 0.00915, or 0 0.0095, which is really relatively close to our answer up there. So again, is it perfect? No, but it is within one-tenth of a percent. Um, so, and if you're within one-tenth of a percent, most people would be like, fine. So anyway, that's the thing. That's um, the two conditions, the 10% condition and large count condition. Sorry, I was thinking about tomorrow where we get to flip water bottles. So um, if you have any questions, let me know. Talk to you later.